Hello everybody, my name is EK, you're watching EK Tech, and in today's video we are going to be taking a look at the DirectX 12 mod sort of for Go Wars 2. Now, before we dive into anything else, I want to do a quick installation guide. If you don't care about my preamble or anything like that, feel free to skip to the timestamp that I should be putting up somewhere on the screen right now. It's also going to be in a link down below in the comments, where you can just click on it and you can just go to the benchmarks instead of watching me ramble. So. Without further ado, let's just do a quick installation guide. So first of all, for the requirements, you need at least Windows 10. You know, pretty much everyone has Windows 10 these days. If you don't, you know, it's probably still using Windows 7. Just, you know, get Windows 10. It's actually perfectly fine these days. It used to be a bit crap, but these days it's great. So next, uh, DirectX 12 capable GPU. Uh, just look at your GPU, type in Google um, your uh, video card uh, name so for example gtx 1080 ti in my case and you should see what DirectX version it's capable of running pretty much everything from the past couple of years should be running this perfectly fine uh, one thing about the vram also has to do with your graphics card uh, pretty much every gpu released in the past five years or so should easily cover this unless you're running something very very low end and six gigabytes of system ram uh, you know you can probably you probably know this already, but you can find it in your system uh, settings, like the uh, overview with all of the components, and you can easily see how much RAM you have. If you don't know, if you have like a pre-built system, just check this because it's very important. Uh, proper work and minimal hardware specification is not guaranteed, so you know it's it's a it's a limit set by the developer. Uh, it might not work for everyone, but I do have to tell you before we dive into anything else, uh, it works. It's good. So this, these are the recommendations, you know, 4 gigabytes of VRAM, 6 gigabytes of uh, RAM. Just check whether you have these things. If you don't meet the minimal requirements, don't even try this. Uh, but I really recommend you to try and have the recommended requirements because it's just so much better. So installing, guys. It's very simple. Uh, disable all overlay software. Any software, for example, the um, Reshade or Gilbert's to Hook, as it's called these days, uh, doesn't work with this. So if you're using that, you know, that's going to be a bit of a downside. You can't use it. Uh, you can also not use uh, stuff like ArcDPS, I'm pretty certain, which might be an issue for you hardcore Raiders or your hardcore Fractal CM guys. Uh, but you're probably, there's probably going to be a way to fix that later on. Um, now, installing is very simple. You download the latest release from right over here. So we go here and we just download this zip file right here. Oh, sorry, the zip file right here. We download it, we just go and unpack this thing. I'm just waiting for it to download. It's gonna be 15 MBs, it's like nothing. So I'm just gonna open this up. Now you won't see this on my screen because I'm not capturing this, but there's gonna be of course one file in the zip file. You're gonna extract it into your Guild Wars 2 folder. It's not gonna be the bin folder, it's not gonna be any other folder. Just put it in a folder where your .exe is as well. Once you're in that folder, um, as it says right wait hold on hold on wrong thing wrong thing like as it says right here it's going to be in your game root folder so just put it right next to your exe and it's going to be fine you're going to go into the folder that's put there it's going to be a folder called uh, d912pxy i believe and then there's going to be an install.exe if you don't want to change anything which you probably don't have to just press enter 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 until the windows closes thing like that's all you have to do just press enter continuously the program is going to exit it's going to be installed properly i'm going to even going to show you guys this because it's just so damn easy of course i'm going to be putting a link to this in the description so if you want to go here you know just follow the steps it's actually super easy but i don't want to cover it real quick because there might be some people who are like how does this work so you know you can just refer to this video and it's it's super simple Alright, so with the installation guide out of the way, we can now dive into the gameplay itself. Uh, as you can see on the screen right now, I'm running the game in DirectX 12 mode. With the settings you saw at the beginning, it's pretty much everything at high, nothing at ultra. The character models are also at high, the character quality is also at high. Uh, I don't want to do a comparison at first between the different versions, but the problem is that uh, both I have to show them both on the screen, which makes the numbers displayed on the screen very, very small. You can probably not even read them on like a small screen, so it's not really worth a whole lot. And, uh, you know, it's very hard to recreate the exact scene you're seeing on this screen right now. But as you can see, my FPS is sitting in the 70s, and I'm going to have to tell you, I do have a file with the 
actual uh, DirectX 9 version as well, and I'm sitting in like the 50s right here, so this is actually a very nice improvement. Later on in the video, after the first six or so minutes, I am going to do a comparison with actual benchmarks, I'm going to do actual stat comparisons, but this, this first part is going to be me talking about what I saw, and if you don't care about this, you know, there's going to be, once again, there's going to be a timestamp, and you can just skip to the benchmarks instead. So as you can see, we're sitting at uh, 70 to 80 FPS approximately. One thing that I did notice, which is very interesting, is that actually nothing in my system usage really changed. I tested this with multiple scenarios, with multiple settings, and I've got to say that my GPU usage was always the exact same as it was in DirectX 9 mode. Uh, the CPU usage was always within a couple percent of the other version, so there weren't really any noticeable differences, except for the fact that my RAM is usually sitting at 1.8 to 2.5 gigabytes-ish, while when I'm running a DirectX 12 mod, it's sitting more akin to 2.5 gigabytes at minimum, bumping up towards the 4 gigabytes mark. So it's utilizing a bit more RAM, which would explain why it's better at rendering multiple characters on the screen. Now, of course, this isn't really that interesting because you can't see the comparisons right now. So once again, just take this with a grain of salt. This is my system and I'm just displaying you know, the, the quality that I'm achieving right now. Uh, one hint that I want to give you guys, uh, if you are running something like Reshade, you can actually work around this. Uh, if you have a NVIDIA video card, it is possible for you to run the filter overlay thing that they offer. I can't think of a name for some odd reason, but it works perfectly fine and it's actually way better in terms of performance. So if you do have a NVIDIA graphics card, then that's actually a very nice addition. As you can see, my FPS is like in the hundreds right now, and it's actually very good because usually right here I'm sitting at around about 60 to 70 FPS. And this is with a GTX 1080 Ti with a, a 2700X running at 4.3 GHz in all cores. You are going to be noticing some uh, you no know, pop-ins here. This is because accidentally on this test I was running the game on my uh, hard drive instead of my SSD. So take it with a grain of salt, that's not the mod work, that's just, you know my hard drive screwing up a bit. So in this situation, once again, we've got everything at high. You can very clearly see that the FPS stays well above 40 FPS. Usually when I do this with my uh, DirectX 9 version, I am dropping into the 30s and sometimes even high 20s if it's like super populated. But you know, we're staying at a very stable 40-ish FPS, bumping up towards the 60, 60s when we're not looking at a lot of players, which is very good for Guild Wars 2's rather old engine. Now, this is something that people have been wanting to see. This is uh, the Istan form, of course. Uh, we're sitting at high graphics right now. Uh, we're sitting at the high 20s, which isn't very bad per se, but it's not as great as we'd want it to be. However, do keep in mind, I can't imagine any anyone really wanting to run Istan farms with high character model limits and high character model quality. I am going to be downscaling this during this specific video uh, we're watching right now. I'm going to be downscaling the settings to just see how much of an impact there is when I'm downscaling it to a lower amount of uh, rendered character models. So during the entirety of the start of this video, we are sitting at around about 30 FPS, which is fine. It's playable, but for someone with pretty high-end stuff like me, you know, you don't want to be sitting at 30. You want to be sitting comfortably somewhere around the 60s. So. As we're moving in here, I'm going to be bumping down the settings. I'm just waiting for myself to bump down the settings. Yeah, there, there's my mouse. Great. Medium. So we're going from high to medium. I didn't test highest, by the way, because who the hell is going to play this in highest? If you do that, then you just, you know, you don't want FPS anyway, so you can't be, you know, complaining. So here I just completely messed up, by the way. I just don't mind my gameplay. I'm watching my, my settings. I'm watching my FPS and stuff, and uh, my gameplay is going to be horrible. So just, you know, ignore that. Uh, so medium didn't really make that much of a difference, we're still sitting in the 20s. Now if I drop it down to low, you can see we are moving a bit more into the mid 30s, uh, but we're still relatively close towards the 30 mark. The difference isn't that noticeable. Uh, we are sometimes bumping up towards the 40s, so it's uh, way more playable. But here we go guys, we're gonna bump it down to lowest, and I think this is gonna actually give me a rather massive improvement. Okay, there we go guys, I'm sitting at around about the mid 40s right now, and if you have played this specific part of the S10 farm, you know that the performance here is actually terrible usually. 
Uh, I've heard people talking about them being at like single digit FPS right here. So being with a playable 40, 45, sometimes even 50 FPS actually isn't too bad. As you also can see, my GPU isn't sweating at all. It's sitting at 65% GPU utilization, which is absolutely nothing. And at the same time, my CPU is sitting at 20 to 30%, which once again is absolutely nothing. You can also see that the spread across the core seems to be pretty nice. However, some are like very high uh, utilizations and some are very low utilizations. So yeah, it seems to be using the other cores a bit but not to that full extent. Now, this is of course the other part that always bumps your FPS down into the single digits. This is the fight with uh, Archon Iberu, I believe his name is, and we're sitting in a comfortable high 40 situation with all the effects going on, with the entire light show going on. Of course, this is with the character model at the lowest because I highly recommend, guys, if you're farming this and you care any, and, and to any capacity about your frame rate, please just go with the lowest because why the hell not? So here we are going to be running around Alliance Archer a bit. This is also where I'm going to put in some graphs because this is of course the most important part. I run the test, I run the benchmark and you can clearly see that the um, green bar is the DirectX 9 performance, the red bar is the DirectX 12 performance. Now we're just going to go left to right. Uh, first of all the average FPS is uh, slightly higher, it's um, about 8 FPS higher with the uh, DirectX 12 version as opposed to the DirectX 9 version. Uh, which is just very nice. Average FPS is of course one of the very important metrics. Now minimum FPS, it's it's a very small margin of improvement. It's only around about two FPS right now. Uh, if we're then moving towards the max FPS, <coughs> excuse me, you can see that there's actually a pretty decent bump. It's a bump of around about 12 FPS. I did run this test twice, by the way, both uh, on the DirectX 9 version and the DirectX 12 version, just to get you know good averages. Uh, if we're moving even further to the right, we get the 1% low FPS, so this means the 1% of the lowest frames that it's uh, detected. Um, once again, it's a bit higher, and the same counts, of course, for the 0.1 low percent FPS, which isn't really important to me. I really feel like 1% low FPS is way more important because you're actually spending 10 times as much time there as you are in the 0.1%. But both of them show improvements in between the 1 and the 2 FPS range in the Lion's Arch situation specifically because we are going to be moving over to some other benchmarks and you will see some actual pretty good improvements which aren't really shown in this specific instance. Alright, so for this one I don't have a video. Uh, I could cover one but you know it's really about stats so you know just take it for what it is. So this is the Urban Battleground Fractal. Uh, what I did was I just ran the initial part, so I ran a specific part uh, a couple of times. I ran from the gate, I ran to the left, then I ran over, you know, the ramp kind of thingy, and then towards the gate. And I did that about three or four times, uh, took averages, and then, you know, put the averages in this graph over here. The average FPS is pretty much identical. However, the minimum FPS seems to be about five higher. Now, if we're moving to the maximum FPS, you know, it's uh, it's slightly higher, but does it really matter? No, probably not, because most people will most likely be running some lower end 60 hertz panels anyway. So any performance over 60 isn't going to make as big a difference. 1% uh, lower FPS, once again, it's about 4 FPS higher. And at the same time, the 0.1 low FPS is also about 5% higher. So there is a pretty decent improvement all over the board, especially in the lower FPS margins, which is of course why Gilbert 2, why Gilbert 2 suffers way more than other parts, so it's very important that the improvement is seen over there. Now we also have the Volcanic Fractal, which I ran in its entirety. I ran the entire Fractal twice, once in DirectX 9 mode, once in DirectX 12 mode, um, with the same people, so pretty much everything was as identical as possible, and here you can see some very nice improvements. So this is a way easier to run Fractal, but it's also been able to achieve way more. You can clearly see that the average FPS is way higher. Minimum FPS is slightly higher, but you know, it's substantial. It's still 4 FPS. Then maximum FPS is an enormous difference. And of course, the 1% low FPS and open 1% low FPS are also way higher. Do have, I do have to mention that the 0.1% um, low FPS, while it's significantly higher, I do think it's some sort of a mess up on my end because I can't imagine it bumping down to like 12.8 FPS, you know, 
I'm still not sure about this margin here, so you know, just keep it in, keep it in mind because it might not be entirely accurate. Now, if we move on to the next one, you can clearly see that we have this Sha uh, Svani Shaman World Boss, and this is also something that surprised me to a great extent because you can see that the average FPS is way higher; it's 18 higher. Minimum FPS is like 11 higher. Max FPS is way higher. Like everything across the board is just way higher. But especially those lows, guys. Those lows are just so good to see improve because that's what Gilbert's 2 suffers a whole lot. You go into a big circ and everything just starts to stutter. Your FPS drops into single digits. So it's just very nice to see this huge improvement. Now, if we test the fire elemental boss as well, uh, you can see the same sort of improvements over the board. Yes, the improvements are a bit more minor. Uh, you're talking 4, 5 FPS range for most of it. But once again, it's an improvement all across the board. So there's actually no reason for any doubt in terms of whether it's better. Now moving towards the total FPS graph, uh, average FPS overall test. So I notified two things. I uh, wanted to write down the average FPS, which has improved by a whopping 12, which is just great. Like average FPS is probably the most important stat to most people. So I'm very happy to confirm that the improvement has been massive. Now at the same time, the other most important thing in my personal opinion is not maximum FPS because who gives a fuck about maximum FPS in most situations. It's 1% minimum FPS. What is the 1% lowest FPS that you can see? And in this situation, it's increased by about 4 FPS, which might not seem like a whole lot, but if you put it on average, you know, it's, it's actually a pretty decent margin, especially percentage-wise. Talking about percentages, we are going to be moving into a different graph right here that is going to be showing you guys the total percentage increases. So we have average FPS, which increased by 22.4%, so that's almost a 25% increase, guys. Almost 25% increase across the board, by the way, guys. This is an old test that I've done. This is across the board. This is a 25%-ish increase, which is just incredible for the amount of work it requires on your end. Now, the 1% minimum FPS is also bumped up by 13.6% in my tests, which once again is a pretty huge difference. Now do keep in mind, however, all of the tests were done with the same hardware, with a 1080 Ti, with 2700X running at 4.3 gigahertz, and with 32 gigabytes of RAM, so I had a lot of headroom to work with, and the DirectX 12 patch may have taken advantage of this more than it would if you had, for example, let's say a 960 with 16 gigs of RAM and an 8600K or whatever, I'm just, you know, talking off my ass and thinking of random components, but, you know, your margin may vary. But from what I've been able to tell, from what I've read from other people, I'm pretty certain that the FPS increase will be there no matter your system, as long as you meet the recommended requirements. So then, would I recommend everyone install this? Yes, if you care about performance. No, because there are some other things you want to, you know, think about. So what are these other things? Well... First of all, uh, like I mentioned, it does work with every single overlay, so do keep in mind that you might have some overlays that don't work with the software. There is a compatibility list on the page that I uh, put a link to in my description, so go and check it out, see whether the software you're using is compatible with this software, and if not, you know, it might be something to skip if you prefer that piece of software over the uh, pr improvement in uh, FPS. Now also, I have been noticing a couple more crashes on my end. Uh, this might be due to something completely unrelated. I am not entirely certain yet, but in my past, let's say 30 hours of playing this, I have seen about four or five crashes. And I don't think I've seen these crashes to the same degree when I was playing with DirectX 9 client. So there might be some instabilities here, it might be something on my end, I'm not entirely certain, but do keep in mind there might be some issues with the stability, there might be some issues with crashing, so just be very careful if you want to use this program that this might happen to you as well. Alright, so I've been talking for about 15 minutes now, which is way more than you guys should be hearing from me. Uh, I didn't want to go into this as thorough as I could. Of course, there were many more things I could have tested, but I just wanted to take the things that were easy to replicate so I could get very solid results. I would love to hear from you guys in the comments down below whether you find this interesting. Also, please let me know whether you have gotten any improvements. Let me know your hardware. What hardware are you running? Did it work for you? Because I really want to see whether it's working only for high-end hardware 
or lower end hardware as well because I don't have it on, on hand so I can't really test it myself. Anyway guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it got you some insight into this mod. So thank you very much for watching and have a nice day guys. I'll see you around.